Acts chapter 5, 1 to 10. Now a man named Ananias together with his wife, Sapphira, also sold a piece of property. With his wife's full knowledge, he kept back part of the money for himself, but brought the rest and put it at the apostles' feet. Then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept for yourself some of the money you received for the land? Didn't it belong to you before it was sold? And after it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? What made you think of doing such a thing? You have not lied just to man, but to God. When Ananias heard this, he fell down and died. And great fear seized all who heard what had happened. Then some young men came forward, wrapped up his body, and carried him out and buried him. Verse 7. About three hours later, his wife came in. Not knowing what had happened, Apostle Peter asked her, Tell me, is this the price you and Ananias got for the land? Yes, she said, that is the price. Apostle Peter said to her, How could you conspire to test the Spirit of the Lord? Listen, the feet of the men who buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out also. Verse 10. At that moment, she fell down at his feet and died. Then the young man came in and, finding her dead, carried her out and buried her besides her husband. Initially, I wanted this to just be reading of the scripture, but I'll speak more. I started by saying Safira Bokoku because many people refer to root of the Old Testament, especially in Yoruba culture, as being the one who died with her husband. But Ruth did not die with her husband. She followed her mother-in-law from her own land, renouncing her people and believing on the God of Israel, the true living God. So she gained life while Safira lost her life, both physically and spiritually. For misunderstanding, Ephesians 5, verse 24, that reads, Now, as the bride, they say church, but it's bride, as the bride submits to Christ, so also wives submit to their husband in everything. So she submitted to her husband Ananias in lie and deception against God's word. That is where she missed it. And she was given an opportunity to say the truth and redeem herself in Acts chapter 5, verse 8, when Apostle Peter asked her, Tell me, is this the price you and your husband Ananias got for the land? She boldly said, Yes. Lying and confirming their lie in secrecy. That is the price. So she was judged along with her husband. This couple of Acts chapter 5, 1 to 10, Ananias and Sapphira, are those who like uniformity, but they don't walk in the unity of the Holy Spirit. They don't care to go against God's word just to present themselves as if they are doing something good. They saw a Levite in the previous chapter of Acts chapter 4, doing something right, doing it the right way, selling his own land and bringing everything. And they saw how they gave glory as his light so shined before the brethren. They wanted to do likewise, but they were not a spiritual body. They were just body flesh. Ananias depletes so many men these last days that are so religious but not godly. They don't have the fruits of the Holy Spirit. They don't have even you know, a connection with the God Almighty. That's why they go into occultism. They go to all sorts of things they do underneath as though God does not see them. But God sees you. Ezekiel 8.18 is waiting for you. For spiritual men and husbands, if you want to know if truly you are on the right path, look at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 to 27 and be like the very example you have, your Lord Yeshua, Jesus Christ, who loved his own bride as himself and gave up himself for her to make her what? Holy, without stain, without wrinkle, holy and blameless.
without any Jeremiah 430 property of JC Bell either. No blemish. So you shouldn't be the husband putting the blame on your wife. You shouldn't be the one making her worldly, buying her fake hair, fake this and that as gift. You shouldn't be the one telling her and telling her to lie with you as Ananias of Acts chapter 5 wants to say. You should concentrate on presenting your wife as an example of the body of Christ, as a radiant bride, wife, and virtuous woman before God. Not like those who think they are the one to reshape a woman who has been brought up in the way of the Lord. You want to not control her before you know you are the head of the house. If truly you are heading for heaven, you should give yourself up in all holiness, righteousness, truthfulness for your wife. Fulfilling Genesis chapter 2 verse 24. Therefore a man will leave his father and his mother and be joined with his own wife. And they will become one body, not flesh, one body. We are the body of Christ. Sin passes on through the flesh. So you are supposed to be one body and put your flesh under without yielding to the flesh. So I'm going to round this up once again that we are going to give account to the Most High how we have lived our lives. Even as godly women, we desire our fulfillment is in loving, responding, you know, submitting and respecting our spouse in the Lord, not those who dominate and oppress us. Let's go, let's go, let's go.